Ladies and gentlemen, let's try Gaming Total.com video. Let us discuss the PlayStation 4 architecture and the Unity engine, shall we? Now, the Unity engine, of course, is a very popular engine. We'll discuss about it just in a moment. However, the CEO of Unity has said that it will make effects that were previously in the realms of science fiction doable. Now, Unity, as I mentioned, is extremely powerful and it's extremely popular amongst games developers. It works on a huge variety of different platforms, so it's easy to compile. Um, that means that it will work on everything from the iOS to Windows to consoles and everything in between. And of course, it will support various things such as materials, rendering, lighting, special effects, audio, physics, and all the other good stuff, of course, that is a prerequisite to make a game worth a damn. And so... Many of you will be probably familiar with the Unity engine. You've probably seen the logo pop up and all. So, first things first. Um, they were asked, uh, David Helgerson, that's H-E-L-G-A-S-O-N. Uh, he's the CEO of Unity, and he was asked, well, what do you think of basically of the PlayStation 4 and the unified architecture? He said, and I quote, absolutely, this architecture simplifies development and makes techniques that were previously were in the realm of science fiction doable. We intend to make this powerful, extremely powerful, I'm sorry, uh, extremely easy to use like everything else we do. Out of quote for a moment, um, the Unity engine is well known by games developers to be very simple. That's not to say crap or, you know, not very powerful, but very simple, easy to use, intuitive, and... A great starting point for a lot of games developers, especially for the indie scene. Anyway, um, he added on to this, Unity is a facilitator. We want to make tools that make it easy as possible to put games and other projects in front of as many eyeballs as possible. We will, of course, offer complete compatibility with unique features that the various platforms from SCE and Microsoft, as you are likely aware, Unity's own philosophy is largely about inexclusiveness. We're doing what we can to get professional and powerful tools in the hands of as many developers as possible. We want every developer, whether they are a large publisher, funded studios, or a one-man team, to have the same chances of success. SCE, and more recently Microsoft, have been moving towards a position of being much more open to smaller developers putting games on their systems, and we're very happy to see that shift. It's something that we think is good for the industry as a whole and for gamers himself. End quote. Unfortunately, he did not, David, I mean, did not offer any insight, any further insight, rather, onto either the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, which is a bit of a shame. Um, obviously, the Unity Engine is going to be released on both systems. So it's not exactly huge amounts of information. I am kind of curious on his ideas behind or his thoughts on the ESRAM side of things obviously from the way it's sounding and obviously this is just my two cents and it is certainly not meaning to put words into the man's mouth but it does sound as though he personally believes that the uh, unified architecture and eight gigabytes of RAM uh, GDDR5 is possibly going to be a bit easier to develop for however he didn't state anything about the Xbox so I'm just surmising based on his comments so obviously um he could well add amend or completely change his mind in a couple of weeks time and say the xbox one is significantly easier to develop for anyway i think that's just about it this has been a fairly short video for me but hopefully you've enjoyed it anyway i'll see you soon take care bye for now now of course they're also going to be putting some work onto the clouds especially when it comes to ai and helping them and i quote build a bigger world with more physics, lots of AI, and potentially a lot more than that. Now, that could be another feature as well, of course, that's allowing them to achieve 60 frames per second, especially if um, you're having dedicated servers or whatever being pushed towards um, the cloud rather than the console needing to do it. Regardless, it does look a very impressive game. Um, to be honest with you, however, even Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, for example, does look very good even now. Uh, Source Engine is actually one of those games, especially if you start uh, looking at high-definition um, texture packs, it still looks pretty damn good, even now. 
I suspect that we're going to be seeing a fairly true to 1080p quality um, resolution on the Xbox One. I'm not saying it will be 1080p, it could be 900p, but I don't really think it's going to be 720 at least I'm hoping it won't be. Um, early versions of the game weren't as good performing and that was of course on PC hardware but obviously that was a lot less optimizations. Another thing as well of course is because it is on a console they can much better optimize the hardware and this has been something that we've discussed previously particularly in the Mantle video. If you're unfamiliar with that you can simply search Mantle on the channel but as it turns out Mantle um, is a great example of just how low level optimizations in code can much better um, improve performance and some people cite you know two times better performance so in other words let's assume that you're doing something on a console in theory the console is equivalent to like two times uh, better performance than if it was on a PC or very similar spec but a lot of people now for example AMD have started to argue that that's no longer the case it's you're getting much more uh, parity between them as uh, drivers improve and so on uh, later versions of DirectX have also improved things such as draw calls but they're nowhere near as good as what they should be um, so hence that's one of the reasons that developers now are starting to push or want at least uh, low level access to uh, the GPU and other features um, with something for example like Mantle Regardless, I don't really think that we're going to be getting a situation where we won't be seeing 60 frames per second on the Xbox One. I do want to know what resolution they're targeting. I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be um, 900p or 1080p, however, but obviously it's still a bit early to know. I think that the GPU on the Xbox One should be okay with this one. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of clear this up because a few people have been mentioning to me, so just wanted to put it out there. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.